Well, here it is. I got it finished. I decided not to do a video like a lot of people do where they fast forward and looks like some sort of Benny Hill uh, movie. Uh, I just basically showed the steps, uh, the completed, and I, I stop along the way and maybe show some things that I find or tips. Um, I did figure out that my uh, I didn't have enough supports on that top piece when a storm blew through here, so I'm going to put that back up and put some more of those uh, blue clips that I made. I noticed it bent. I'll put one up there, two of them up there. But yeah, stay tuned. You'll uh, get to see. I made a uh, little spacers for here. Little clips for down there. Um, and of course, I made a tool to help caulk the ends of this. You know, we'll get the we'll get the videos going. Hope you enjoy. Comment, like, subscribe. Uh, I'll start to maybe put more content up. I'm plan for this is uh, eventually maybe some hydroponics, uh, aquaponics. I'm actually going to be doing some automation with some Arduinos. I got my IBCs. So, lots coming. This won't be the this will just be the beginning. All right, one thing that another YouTuber did that I highly recommend is to take all these pieces out and uh, kind of get them separated so you can identify easily identify them while you build. Didn't notice something different. They did, uh, some of these have the stickers on them, which is real easy to see. But for the most part, they're going to where they're stamping it. And you'll see that is the O3. Two of those. There's four, so they're not very consistent on their numbering. There's O5. Seven. So, get this all laid out. There's your panels. We'll uh, tackle those later. All right, the phase one base assembly. These brackets are a little different than what's actually shipped. Um, those number forty six. They, they actually fit a lot better. Uh, the forty fives are not uh, flimsy like the old models. Uh, it goes together pretty simple. Um, there's your bolts, 68 and 69. And your instructions. Yeah, we didn't put this base into the ground. We we're gonna put it on top of uh, pressure treated four by fours. One thing I do notice that they changed looking at other people's videos is these brackets where they wouldn't line up and these are very sturdy. They slide in, screw holes do line up very well and also the corner brackets they seem to have beefed those up. They go together quite, quite nicely. After we moved this fence, we uh, picked a site right there where uh, the old fence line used to be. Basically spaced it about where this sidewalk goes. So this is where we're going to lay this out. That base takes maybe 15 minutes to put together. Just line the parts up, get the brackets in, and use an impact to uh, get the, the bolts and screws together. It's a little flimsy, so we're going to mark this off, get our uh, little trenches dug for the 4x4 that's going to stay in the ground, pressure treated lumber, and go from there. You know, some of these, depending on the kit, they've said there's variance in the length and width, so make sure you measure. 
this one is coming out to uh, nine foot it's like ten and five eighths maybe ten and a half is what we'll call it five foot ten and a or nine foot ten and a half by 11 foot ten and a quarter as you can see I finally got the base done I got this uh, all leveled right before a pretty good rain last night so I'm gonna have to go back in here and make sure it's all packed in to get this arranged I actually went through with my nail gun and nailed this to the base to hold it down. I was going to drill and screw it, but I uh, probably should have pre-drilled before I put it all together. But I got this front done, and then I uh, squared it off and then nailed the back. The sides, I'm not going to secure those down until I get a little further along and things start straightening up and firming up. I'm going to have to loosen those bolts and bring that back down. As you can see, there's a gap at the top and not at the bottom. So, probably good to uh, go through this and uh, kind of just loosen those bolts and retighten them to let everything settle into its natural shape and it'll help with the strength. I did also put some of these nice. bolts in through the corner to help with some of the secure. Now the plan is to actually dig in each of the four corners and put a uh, eight by eight foot four by four upright which we'll use to uh, basically build some of the plant supports and and such throughout so that'll help with the overall strength and keeping the thing secure to the ground so it's not just going to be in the ground by its own weight. So we got the, the base ready. Time to move on to the next page on the directions to get the uh, bottom rail across the perimeter, which everything will mount to. All right, phase two, floor plate installation. So we're gonna have to pick up five, six, three, four, 1A, 2A, which is going to be your door. Uh, 3, 4 times 2, and then our 65 and 67, which will get that through our bolt organizer. Which and pulled out of their bags and then I'm pretty willing to bet we should use these to 47 um, gray parts are in place hold down connectors 47 so yeah we'll start putting those in too uh, which will actually help support the uprights so we need to make sure that these plates are in the right orientation. Save you a lot of headaches later on, especially with the door installation. So you see there the little retainer clips. They don't have them labeled on here, which they should. I guess they do right here in the blow up. So the 47 It'll, it'll use the same nuts and bolts. All right, found a problem. Right here.
these pieces are supposed to screw together. And if you look in the directions, it says place 1A on top of the base plate 44, lay the right front plate 2A on top. Align the two holes. So here's 2A, and there's two holes, and here is 1A, which I can't find the label for this one. It's not stamped, or and it doesn't have a sticker, but it's the same shape. So we're going to have to drop you. We're going to have to come back and uh, drill some holes. No big deal. But I don't know if that was an intentional or a manufacturing mistake, but here we go. All right, phase two is done. There's uh, where I had to drill the holes at. These clips will be loosened and some of the uh, uprights will actually attach to them. So either finger tighten them or be prepared to loosen them again whenever you're ready to go to the next steps. All right, phase three, corner posts. This can be a little tricky from what I understand. Um, you gotta pay really close attention to details, uh, the order that these uh, these corners are done. Um, they don't really show an exploded view. Here's where you'll have to loosen a couple of these to uh, reuse those hold down clips. pay in particularly close attention to how this bracket goes in. Just uh, read the directions multiple times and make sure you understand what they're saying and try not to commit to uh, cranking down all the bolts until you're sure it's done right. In the garage, I pre-assembled these. <clears throat> so here's your back left corner. It's 80, 79, and I believe that's 31 on the inside. So this is going to be your corner brace, corner brace, and this is actually going to be horizontal on the back wall so it'll kind of just hang freely for now. I went ahead and cranked this down. I put this plate on first and uh, tightened it because you can't get to it unless you use like an open end and these are all just finger tight. Uh, got all four of them laid out. Now on to putting them up and getting them secured in. So that one piece, I believe it's 1A that I needed to pre-drill or drill two holes in. Apparently there should be at least two more holes. So we got one for the corner and then of course for this brace, which should be about here. So I'm gonna measure the distance on the other side and uh, fix this problem. Yeah, that's, that's gonna mess a lot of people up. All right, here we go. We got the four corners up. I'm going to show you all that's finger tight for now just to let it wiggle in and when we get more of the structure we'll uh, snug them all up. Phase four now. All right, here we are, phase four is uh, kind of a multi-part 4A. These are going to be the top plates, horizontal plates. I really guess they're calling them the ceiling plate assembly. Four B's the sides. The uh, stuff we're going to pre assemble here in the garage. Ceiling plate, that's where 31 swings up. The 
this is why we didn't uh, crank down some of these is because we have to re we're gonna unscrew those and slide these plates in that's actually phase five so let's get four done and we'll go from there all right, got these ceiling posts built. Then across, read in directions, attach end cap 72 to the top of the outer quarter of each corner post at this point. So, there's nothing in the diagram for this, but I figured out these corner posts, seven. There's a um, number 72. So we need to go put these on top before we put the uh, brackets on top. I guess it probably keeps it from rubbing or wearing. It may probably make a noise too. All right, here we are, phase five. We're gonna get these all attached to the top. This direction's kind of they, you know, gray parts in place before this phase, which these are kind of hard to see where where these are at. I may have to get on the computer and do an exploded view. Okay, so that right there is an example. So this bolt that comes off of 80 is going to have to be removed and reattached. Probably most of them, it's just going to be 80 and then 31, 32, we're going to put these little brackets up here and tie them together. If you cannot attach the second post connector. Alright, so 31 says they will be under tension, so they're not, the way it's designed, they're going to be basically kind of bound up just because the way they really should have designed this bolt on this one to be up higher, a little higher than where it's attached. So basically, over here and over here. They're attached at the same point. So if you drew a straight line, they would be exactly on top of each other. So this one's going to be higher and that one's going to be a little lower. So we're going to have a little bit of a bind there, which is noted in the directions. Let's get to it. Okay, so I ran into another snag, nothing major. So right here, on this back here, these are supposed to be straight up and down. Well, mine just wouldn't quite line up. And these same 31, 31, and well, there's six 31s, and they all should be identical. But I just happen to pick the one. See, there's a top and a bottom to these, where one hole is off. So make sure if the parts have the same number, you set them side by side, that they do actually match. So I'm about to drill that hole just to line it up. It makes a difference. <laughs> Dean, crazy cat. <clears throat> so one thing, get you either a second person or clamp. It won't go in if it's angled completely. But I also found out on the front, should not have put that bolt in. It even tells you in the directions. But on this step, when you pull this out, you're supposed to put one in with the bolt going through so then the nut on the other side because it's going to be used later so keep that in mind on the front two corner posts to if you did what i did flip this around because you won't be able to do it later all right phase five complete 
This is what you should have. And this is the reason why that top bolt is turned around. Went ahead and tightened up the four corners on the base. And it's coming together. Phase six. All right, phase six, post installation. So this one's gonna get a little crazy because we got a, a lot of bolts. Um, and you'll notice that we have, for instance, uh, let's look at this one. We're basically gonna loosen that bolt there and we're going to slide it on top and then we're going to put four 66's in the channel and then we're going to use a 65 to attach it to the top so like that one will have six total bolts um, this one will have the top the three in the middle that 78 is going to tie into 80 and then you have the one at the bottom you're going to slide in these other two will be used for cross braces so just pay attention to that and you'll see how the channel slide in on the bottom you have all those bolts there so they you should just loosen and then slide it in and this explains how it's going to get stacked so on and then of course there's a special note about the rear horizontals you want to make sure that it doesn't extend past half because that'll affect your uprights for your ceiling in the later phase alrighty and here is 14 notice there's a, uh, a channel in there for the bolts to slide in so that is going to be facing the inside the T part will be facing outside Alright, phase seven, the brace installation. So mainly uh, 31s, 30s. And we're going to have to fix that one 31 that has the, uh, the bolt that's messed up, or the hole that's misaligned. Uh, and you make sure we put this between 80 and 79 in between there's a little space where we put in the last phase and the doorway make sure the orientation is right it's getting there it's phase eight phase nine rafters phase eight oh the crown i don't know where we'll stop for today but We'll get on with phase seven. All right, here's after phase seven, I think, the side braces. Just gotta tighten everything up. In this direct, in this, they actually have put the hen gutters on too, the caps. And get a level out here. And get this, these all tightened up. Maybe this is actually supposed to go this is 80. This is on the inside. Same thing with these on the inside, in between them. These should be level. This is about after not including the base and digging that out. I spent about four hours on it today. So. I'm not sure about some of these other people building these things, why it's taking them so long. I think there was even someone that said that they were professional house builders and him and his wife took them 60 hours to build this thing. So, I don't know, maybe they were using the tools that came with it. All right, phase eight, gable and crown. This should be pretty simple. You 
bolts, finger tight until step five of this. Oops, <laughs> everything's super tight. Alrighty, let's get busy. Alright, there's the roof gable and ridge beam. Everything's tightened up. good alrighty phase nine is the rafter and brace installation <clears throat> so we're gonna be getting um, all the rafter pieces in all the braces that are gonna be uh, for like 30 for support and 42 is for the windows um, the ones that open and I've seen configurations where people actually um, I've seen where they've done all four on one side or they moved them to the center so it's not set in stone you can put these windows wherever you want uh, it should be pretty straightforward just like everything else all right after that you got the braces make sure you measure from here to here and then also from here to there to find out which bar goes on top and which one goes on bottom I didn't put a level on them but I kind of I shotted them level and they turned out pretty good so that's after the roof rafters and I didn't put the window bars up I didn't figure it to be uh, worth putting them up until I actually had the windows in but that's next phase 10 is window assembly we're gonna use uh, four of those for each window um, this from what I've found and if you line up the tracks is wrong 39 should be overlapping 38 and if you take a side side view of it um, turned on its end you'll see that the channel that the poly slides in doesn't line up if you follow this direction so put the bolts in and the nuts get those snug down on these corners is how I did it to get them to this point slide these in of course slide these in and put your bolts through because they're going to be between the poly and the aluminum and then uh, once you get it all through uh, you can slide that's why these have little notches in them so you can go ahead and put the screw in before you slide the poly and then that will slide over and then you can tighten it down. Finding the impact is working really well for this. And then also before you do your poly, um, it's recommended that you seal these ends on every piece in the whole kit to keep it from fading over time. Uh, it keeps air and moisture out of the channels. Um, I've actually made i guess i could say i invented a part to help with that uh, we use silicone some people use tape we opted out of the tape because we didn't want the you know the ends showing tape on them so and of course tape loses its adhesive over time so what we're going to do is actually put silicone in the edge and so here's my silicone gun and i actually invented i went and drew this up and printed it 3d printer where I can run this across the top and it takes a little bit of practice after a couple panels you'll kind of get the feel for it um, puts a nice bead inside the ends um, I'll do a little video to demonstrate it um, the only caveat is I would recommend doing one end at a time waiting for that to dry completely before you do the other end. Uh, I've already ran into a problem with uh, when you 
if you don't do that, the air pressure actually pushes the other end out as you're doing it. And uh, also found out, did this inside and then took the panels outside, the heat expanded inside of the panel and started pushing the silicone out. So do one end at a time, let it set up. And once it sets up, go back and do the other end. So I realize it's gonna basically add a day to these panels now, but I'll do another video showing how this works. All right, it's gonna be take two. So first things first, you're gonna secure this. I'll show y'all this little thing I designed and printed, 3D printed. Uh, so far, it's been pretty helpful. Uh, it's gonna speed up putting the uh, silicone inside of the ends. I recommend doing this, securing this because it does uh, has a little tension on it and doing one side and letting it set up completely. Um, the first panels I did, I did both sides and I had where it pushed out the pressure in there, pushed out the other end that I did first and also uh, took them outside and the temperature difference from outside environment, the inside environment and the outside environment actually expanded the air that was inside and started pushing it out. So do one side, let it set up and then do the other side and also keep it in whatever environment you put it, you actually apply, keep it in that environment. But basically what this will do is slide, this groove will slide over the top and I have a couple tapers in there and it'll take a couple tries for you to get get it just right, but just get the, the nice even, low low flow on it, and slide it along. And we'll go back and forth a couple times. And just the way it is going in, it, uh, it's just the only way it's going to get it even in there evenly. And if you have to touch up any, you can just go in there and do that. And always take a tape towel, go across. And that's it. So, I mean, if you're, if y'all are interested in this, I don't even know what to call it. Um, panel applicator, tip applicator, silicone applicator. Give me a suggestion on what you want to call it. Um, and if anybody's interested, I'll put them on my website and I'll put a link where we I can make some up and sell them out. Uh, if you think of any way to improve it, I can do that too. Anyway, that's the panel. It actually, once you get the hang of it, you can get a pretty even bead inside of those channels. And that's gonna keep these panels, uh, the moisture out of them and uh, make them last a lot longer anyway i got uh, quite a few more of these to do and then i got to come back tomorrow and do the other sides all right i got my doors installed still don't have the windows in yet i uh finished those um letting them letting the silicone set up before i bring them out because i don't want the heat to to push the fresh silicone out of the panels They, uh, they slid in pretty easy. This is the part. It's kind of tricky to get this piece in and get it started. And then of course this flap's gotta get past this point. So you're gonna have a little bit of a, a trick to get that in. But once it's in, then that track slides up there. Fairly smooth. <clears throat> and these clips, I guess they're supposed to be a tool or something you can get, but I did find an easy way to put these in. They're they're not too bad. There's a little little rough on your fingertips, but you basically get one corner in and then you slide this other side in. I'll do a little video. We've got oh probably 220 more of those to do. But, and you can also see the foam strip, and that basically 
it's keeping the some pressure on it where it doesn't rattle and it also weather seals it all right here we go almost done I got one panel we'll uh, show you how to put these there's I found us what is making these difficult and I, ever since I figured it out um, they're all easy to put in so what I did is I actually had a strap from quarter to corner because it was a little bit out of square when I put the roof panels on and I went ahead and loosened pretty much all the nuts got all these end panels in and the two middle panels on each wall and then I actually went through and dug out these corners put these posts in and I got this back was a high spot so that was actually leveled and the next day I came and did the front so it's all square and level and then I came back later and then I added these in the centers to take the bow that was creeping in to these 4x4s and then I secured the, the channel to the 4x4. Got the rest of these panels in and the reason why I did all that work before is because uh, from what I've seen online is you don't want to work in here especially digging holes and pouring concrete with it completely enclosed it gets really hot so I'm finishing up putting the rest of these panels I'm going to show you what I'm doing with I haven't put all the spring clips in these but you'll notice I actually put the foam on the panel everybody that's been putting the foam has actually been putting it on the channel and it's it's it's, it works a lot better if you put it on the panel, but we'll show you how I'm doing that. It's pretty simple. And I also made and designed a piece to go on the end of a caulk gun that runs across here. Actually, I have another video of that. Um, makes it so much easier. Do it before you pull the plastic off. That way. It's nice and clean when you pull this plastic off. Right, let me get this. And basically, I just run the foam. I stick it on one end and I just run it down. Right, one second. Make sure it's seated. Pull the tape off. And we're ready for the next set. I'm gonna put this last panel in, and then I'm gonna show you this other piece that I made, came up with. And I'll, uh, I'll continue that to the next video. Oh, and this is a weather strip. I got it off of Amazon. 3 8 3 16 thick, 60 foot long. It's actually uh, two 30 foot rolls. And it does a wonderful job. There's the UPC. And this is the panel that's done. Just did the sides. I'll come back later and put half inch rope on the bottoms and tops. Our garden is just doing crazy. I did order more clips. 
Did I say that what comes with it is definitely not enough, and I can totally agree with that. So, last piece. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. So, the deal with these are, it's not much difference, but one side, one leg is longer. And so if you're on this side, what you do is you put, hold it like this, this side always goes in first, and then all I do is fold it in there, of course I'm doing this with my non-dominant hand, and it snaps in. So here's a front view, side view. Let's see if I can do this side better. So always start, see that one's gonna be up. Let's go over, I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna stick it in there. Slide it in. If you do it the other way, this one's a little longer and so it, it just makes it really difficult. So, looks like all I've got left is the few more clips and uh, move on to where I'm going to screw the panels with the little parts that I made. Okay, here we are. Got some panels all done, my spring clips, or at least uh, the minimum anyway. And here's a little deal that I, I guess I could say I invented it. A little spacer. I believe it's four millimeters, which would be the distance here. And what that's designed for, these people are putting screws and they put spacers in here, and it's like there's got to be an easier way. So I made this, and basically what it does is it pops in here. You put your screw in, and after it's secured, those little deals pop off. And then all you have in there is a little washer. So, I can go through and set all these in. And I got a little spacer. So, if you'd like these, let me know. Uh, if I get a good response, I'll, I'll pop them up on my uh, website. And uh, maybe I'll sell a little uh, kit or something. Um, for these mods and another thing too is I made another piece that clips right here to kind of keep that but I may do something different because depending on how these bow um, I'm going to put a uh, half inch round uh, foam insulation in here on the top and bottom but I still think it'd be good to have a way to secure this but I don't necessarily want a screw poking out the back of here so I may change that up but I do have a piece here that's kind of like a spacer um, I may change that but anyway yeah if you like that idea let me know now you can make a lot of them all right these are the screws I'm using Got them off Amazon. Number eight, three quarter inch long. And then these washers. Make sure you use those or these screws will be too long and they'll poke through the aluminum like I forgot to do. should seal up. See, this is before I put the washer in. But anyway. That's pretty handy. 
Hope, uh, hope someone else finds them useful. That one got crooked piece it broke. Cool. Oh, and here's the uh, other part that I made for the center. I don't know, I might redo this. I haven't decided yet. Here you go. Thing that I made. Kind of modified my original spacer like that. And I made this one. It has a hole in it. So when you screw through here, your screw doesn't poke all the way through and you can catch it. It's actually going to be protected. I originally intended on this being sealed up, um, but I didn't make it thick enough. So my next prints will be that. So I'm thinking about making some kind of a kit that has these in it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put any at the roof. I may just use these uh, because I'm going to caulk the edge of the drip line. I don't really want to screw in the way, so um, I'll just probably make those regular ones for the roof. I don't know, might change it. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, if you uh, are interested in those, let me know.